In the Catholic Church, we believe in the miracle of the Holy Eucharist. Our Lord Jesus Christ in John 6 said, Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. And we believe that that is literal. It is real. And in the Holy Eucharist, we believe that the substance of the bread and wine fully changes into the substance of the body and blood of Jesus Christ. But the accidental properties, like how it smells, how it tastes, how it looks, those remain as the accidental properties of bread and wine. But in the history of the Catholic Church, there have been unique times in which in the Eucharist there is manifested the blood and the body of Jesus Christ in the host, in the Eucharist. And so today, we're going to look at that scientific evidence, that scientific proof. And with me, I've got Ray Grijalba. Ray, how are you today? I'm doing well. Glad to be on, Taylor. You've got a good video that just came out today, actually, on uh, three Eucharistic miracles. We're going to cover those today and the scientific proof. You've done some great videos already with me on Shroud of Turn and other topics. So I know you're thorough. I know you get into the science. You already have a scientific mind and a background. So you're the perfect man to do it. So welcome. Yes. Thanks be to God. All right. Well, we'll begin in prayer. We'll pray the, the Our Father, the Lord's Prayer in Latin, and then we're going to get right into it. Oremus. And Ray, do you want to do the second half? I will, yeah. All right. In nomine Patris, et Fidei, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pater Noster, qui es in celis, sanctificator nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, secut in cello et in terra. Panum nostrum quotidianum de nobis odie, et dimiti nobis debita nostra, secut et nos dimitibus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationum, Sed libera nos amalo. Amen. Amen. In nomine Patris, et Fidei, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. All right, we're on the screen there. Y'all can see some examples of hosts. You can see the manifestation of the blood of Christ. Uh, Ray, why don't you give us a quick history and a background on Eucharistic miracles? And let's get into the three. Yeah, so really Eucharistic miracles, they go across time. There are reportedly hundreds of them. In this video, I just focused on three because I'm a you know scientific guy, as you mentioned, and I actually want to see the reports. I want to see what the doctors did, what they said. And in, this, in the video, I actually interview three doctors, one of them that actually analyzed the host. But what we see, the first one is Lanciano or Lanciano is the mm -hmm. proper pronunciation, which uh, basically a priest in the eighth century was saying, or a monk was saying the mass and had doubts whether Jesus was truly present in the Eucharist. And during the consecration, the bread became his body physically, and the, the blood became, or the wine became his blood. So, yeah, I've been to Lanciano and I've seen that miracle. Yes. It is, it's quite moving. Uh, they have it displayed in, in what we would call a monstrance. And uh, you can see the flesh, and there's a kind of an exhibit of the science and the blood type and the flesh. And I was amazed to learn that when they tested it, when scientists tested it, they found that it was uh, cardiac tissue it's from the heart. Exactly. And that's one of the things that you find throughout every Eucharistic miracle. It's always the heart tissue. Mm. There are several coincidences or patterns that we find. It's always heart tissue. Yeah. It's always type AB blood. Yep. There are white blood cells in a lot of these, which we'll get into later. But awesome. before we go in, I want to say something that this video in particular, uh, Satan did not want made. So <laughs> I actually ordered a, a DVD for this video uh, four times. Three mm. times it got lost in the mail from three different distributors. So I was like, what is going on? I almost gave up. Yep. But thank God I didn't because I did. And it connected me with Dr. Franco Serafini. I want to give a plug to his book. He is a cardiologist okay. who traveled to all these sites and actually wrote a book from a doctor's perspective on these Eucharistic miracles. So what you hear Taylor and I talking about and what you'll see in my short video is a presentation through a doctor's lens. He literally read the transcript and said, no, that's not true. Yes, that's true. So it's uh, it's pretty incredible. Yeah. Okay. So there was, there was a priest. He was a monk and uh, he himself was doubting the reality of the Eucharist. Uh, I think he was a Basilian. He was, yes. And yeah. and to this day, there are the monks that are present at the at the monast or at the uh, church. We actually went last year, mm -hmm. and my whole life, I'd always heard about Lanciano and was excited to go. So when I went to Rome, I said, or Italy, I said, I definitely got to go to Lanciano, yeah. and it did not disappoint. So 
what I think is one of the most amazing characteristics of it is that 1,200 years later, the flesh is still present. Right. You think that that would deteriorate over time, but it didn't. So that's, I mean, that's a miracle it, in and of itself. If it's the body and blood of Christ, it's not going to corrupt. It's sinless flesh. Exactly. <laughs> United and, to the divine nature. I mean, it's just, it's not going to, it's not going to rot. No, it's not. And what we see is even when that was analyzed. So in 1970, uh, Dr. Eduardo Linoli, who was a cardiologist uh, or a atomic anatomic pathologist, did a review of it. And it's actually published in PubMed, which if anyone is a doctor or science related, PubMed is the, the largest medical library in the nation. So it's pretty amazing that it's on there. We had friends, uh, Ashley and John Arona, who actually translated it from Italian to English because it's not currently present on, in English. So oh, that's on the YouTube channel as of today. So it's really amazing. But what they found, this to me is the most amazing thing of that. So they found it was AB blood, found it was heart tissue, but they found that the ratios uh, showed that it was fresh blood. So here it's 1,200 years old, but the blood appears to be fresh. Mm -hmm. Going back to what we said before, how <laughs> it's it's a miracle. So Jesus, his flesh does not corrupt, and we see in corrupt saints that that'd be something I'd love to do a video on someday. But that was uh, that was just amazing. So Lanciano is most the most popular uh, in the video. I go into some of the myths attributed to that. I don't think we should really go into those today, but right. it's um. It's important to set the record straight, and uh, so you'll see that in that short video. So, Taylor, for those that don't know, is is the uh, link in the show notes? Uh, unfortunately, it's not. You sent it right right before the video, but we'll get it in there. We'll get it in there. Okay. Maybe while okay. you're talking, if I don't look too distracted, I can like sneaky put it in there. All right, all right. So, yeah. but real quick, I'll ask the moderators if if Dan and Will could grab that link on YouTube and put it in the live chat. People can start getting that link. Yes. Okay. That would be great. So, Taylor, I want to go into my favorite Eucharistic miracle. So, do it. do it. There are three that I covered in this video. Tixla in Mexico in October 2006 uh, during communion, there was a, a nun that was distributing and and the, the host started bleeding. So she brought the ciborium over to show the priest and it just sat in the tabernacle for four years. And then uh, what? they initiated. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? So. That, that's the thing that you find with a lot of these Eucharistic miracles. A lot of them are hush-hush. Some of them are discarded uh, because by the bishop, things like that. It's, it's really unfortunate. But four years later, when they went to analyze it, uh, there's this doctor, Dr. Eduardo Sanchez Lazo, who I got to interview. He's in Mexico. He actually agreed to do an interview with me. And uh, he discovered something amazing. This blew my mind. This is the most incredible thing I've ever heard, is that the blood on the host came from the inside of the host. He said it was almost like a blood vessel mm. that was cut and the blood came out. He was able to see that with uh, electron microscopy, but you can you can clearly tell when you have the host, if you just like pour something on top of it, it will seep in at the same pace. But what had actually happened was the blood was coming out from the center and uh, the the depth of penetration changed as as you went out in the radius so yeah it was really incredible now a lot of people could say well who cares about that you know that's just one doctor's opinion but he is a uh he focuses on legal medicine so everything that he does can be brought to court so and that's that's what he often does so he would not sign something saying i, I wouldn't testify to this right and here we were 10 years later because it was about 10 years ago he was doing the analysis 10 years later, still dumbfounded by this, and those results are off to Rome. So that's the thing that's most amazing is we we uh, did a video on the Shroud of Turin, but the church has never come out and said, yes, this is definitely the burial cloth of Jesus. Right. With these Eucharistic miracles, they said, yes, these are miracles. These are approved. Um, and there's, there's a lengthy process that is involved in that. And a lot of people ask, well, is everything a miracle? You know, do, do Catholics just see red stuff on a host and say, ah, that's heart tissue, that's blood? Right. No. So uh, in, in 2015, there's actually a case in Utah where they had it investigated and it was just a red bread mold. And that was ended, which which speaks to the rigor of these studies. So that's right. that's really incredible to see. But going back. If I might add something, you know, if you read Catholic history when it comes to any miracles, 
it is always the case that the local bishop is like, meh, I don't think so. <laughs> Even in the legit ones and in the illegit ones, you know, whether it's Our Lady of Guadalupe, anything, it almost always begins with the bishop saying, meh, I don't think so. I don't like that. So it's not it's not like the Catholic Church. I mean, if you were going to make the argument, the Catholic Church is always trying to fool the lay people and come up with tricks and schemes. You know, you think that the bishops would be the leaders and the insiders on it. But when you read them, it's actually, they almost always begin with skepticism. Yeah. And I guess that that's a prudential decision that they make to not just claim everything is a miracle up front. Because what I, what I did in preparation for this video was I read all the skeptic blogs to see what they said about these miracles. So I'll get into that in just a little bit. But I wanted to say something that is, <laughs> this is something that we find in both Tixla and Buenos Aires, which we'll get into in a little bit. On, uh, in, the, in the, the samples taken from the host, they again found it was heart tissue. But what they found was that there were white blood cells present, which white blood cells do not live after someone dies. So these were living tissues, mm -hmm. right? So I always think of Jesus saying, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. So how else would that make sense unless we see, wow, this living bread is the flesh of Jesus Christ. So it, it's 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 blown away every doctor that's seen it, even the doctor the other night that I was speaking with, he said, there's no way that this could happen. Um, and and to me, that's that again speaks to the great glory that Christ shows through these miracles. Um, they also, th these white blood cells also show that the heart is suffering. So the way, and this get a little deep here, right Taylor, but the way these white blood cells work, the, they only come to the heart when there's trauma. So uh, you can either have a heart attack or be beaten across the chest, things like that, that would cause them to come. They're almost the defenders of the body. So when you see white blood cells present, you know that there was a trauma that occurred. Yeah. And who do we know that had a lot of trauma before their death? Yeah, our Lord. Yeah. Jesus. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's amazing to see that all of these tie together so well. Um, and even there was an analysis two years ago on this tissue that was just sitting in a monstrance, this Tixla miracle sitting in a monstrance, and they still found white blood cells uh, 15 years almost after the miracle occurred. Right. So this is amazing. Science cannot explain this. Um, and, and the thing that's special about this miracle is that I mentioned before I was reading all the skeptic blogs. And if you're a skeptic watching, you're probably like, okay, cool. It's just a tissue that was analyzed. How do we know that that was the actual tissue from the Eucharistic miracle? We have video footage of the host with the blood on it in the doctor's laboratory. So never before has there been that. Here it is. They're analyzing it right in front of us. And this is the result. So because other miracles have had little pieces taken from it. And even at that, there is the possibility that someone could just slide in something else, which which is always a possibility. But here that eliminates that. And really, I think is a mind blowing <laughs> aspect to skeptics. And I think it's Jesus because this is one of the most recent miracles, I think it's Jesus seeing us and our unbelief and saying, okay, so I gave you one in 1200 or 800. I gave you one in 1996. You didn't believe that one. Here's one. Here is the bread is still intact. <laughs> and, and you can analyze it. You can see it yourself. I mean, you can go to Mexico right now and it's in a monstrance behind bulletproof glass. So, uh, cause Tixla, from what I understand is a very intense area. <laughs> Intense yeah. indeed. Yeah, and that's a great point, Ray, that, you know, in, in Catholicism, we understand that there is, amongst the believers, anxieties and doubts and discouragement. And we see it from the very beginning on the first Sunday after the resurrection when, you know, Thomas says, St. Thomas says, well, unless I put my hands in his wounds, I'm not going to believe. And then Christ says, okay, here, put your hands in. I'm going to meet you where your doubt is. And that's exactly what's going on here in these Eucharistic miracles. If we go back to Lanciano, the priest was doubting the real presence. And so Christ says, okay, well, I'm actually going to manifest myself in the host. Now you believe. And thousands yes. of other people believe. And I've known people who were atheists, Protestants. I've met them and talked to them. For them, Lanciano, when they heard about that and did the research, like, whoa, this is the Eucharist is real. I'm a believer. <laughs> exactly. And, and you know, Taylor, I think that that's, even our chiropractor that we go to, 
he's he's I don't I don't think he's has any real relationship with Catholicism, like either for or against it. And we told him about these Eucharistic miracles, and he said, "Oh my gosh!" So we're gonna send him this video probably today because for months we've been saying, "Hey, we're gonna get this video out." And really, this what why this video is unique is you actually get to see what the doctor said, what they wrote. A lot of a lot of these Eucharistic miracle videos that have come out tell the stories and say, well, this doctor said this, but they don't show you the actual original source for that. And I think in an age where everyone is skeptical of everything, you actually need to see that. So there's literally the, the documents from the laboratories. I've redacted the names just for privacy, but um, yeah. So let me, that was a great transition, Taylor with the lack of belief, because the 1996 Buenos Aires miracle, which is very popular, I think is due to a great lack of belief in the Eucharist. Uh, there was a priest, Father Alejandro Pazet, in 1996, who was told that there was a host sitting in a candlestick on the side of the church. Can you believe that? Sitting on a candlestick? Or on a candle? I mean, what do you mean? Like, there's a candlestick like, and there's the a host rim, on it? The rim of the candle, you know? You know, there's the candlestick sure. and there's the rim, you know, sure. they just threw it on there. And Horrible. someone said, hey, Father, there's, there's uh, you know, Jesus, the king of the universe, in the appearance of, you know, bread, sitting here. So what he did was uh, place it in a bowl of water to dissolve, which is the, the custom. And... Tissue actually developed two weeks later. They, they took a picture of it, and then they had that tissue analyzed, which we'll go into. But I think that, uh, I mean, can you imagine seeing, this is what, again, why Taylor talks a lot about communion on the hand should not be allowed. This is another reason, right? <laughs> because you can't do that if you receive the body of Christ. I mean, I guess you could probably take it off. and But regardless, uh, this lack of reverence for our Lord is really terrifying. And, and it almost... This is almost Jesus saying to us, oh, okay, so you don't believe I'm truly present. I will manifest myself, so you'll see that I'm present. Now, so I this, was, this was in a church, so presumably someone received in the hand, thumbs down, and then maybe felt they were in sin or didn't know what to do, so they just, oh, here's a hiding spot. I'll put it on top of this candlestick. That's, that's what we're assuming happened here, probably. Exactly. And I think uh, either that, I mean, you've heard stories of, of people drawing smiley faces on the host and selling them and desecrating them and all this stuff. This is just another form of that, you know? I mean, not not really desecration in, on that same level, but I mean, we've, we've said before how we've actually had to go and, and say, did you receive the host? And I think that's a great tragedy. And again, in 1996, Jesus is like, look at this. And uh, I mean, maybe that's, maybe that's a reason that we're seeing more and more of these miracles because you don't see a lot of these in antiquity. Um, but you see more and more today. The, the one in Poland, they found the host on the ground. I didn't do a video on that because I couldn't find the actual documents. So if we have any polls out there that have the documents, I'd be happy to do a video. Well, we got lots of polls watching. All, the, all right, polls. All the Polish brethren, we salute you and we ask for research and documentation. Send it our way. Yes. Dr. Barbara Engel. I, I emailed her, but didn't get a response. So reach out to her. But, but yeah, so again, these these are showing or Jesus is showing us here that I am truly present and we're seeing more and more of these. I heard of one that happened in Guadalajara a couple years ago. But again, these these aren't really. Um, it's not popular to be a doctor and put your name to these Eucharistic miracles. That's all I'll say, because I reached out to probably 15 doctors and only got a response from three. So uh, a lot of them probably don't want their names tied to this because it might seem extreme or, or whatever, but it's the truth. And there are no explanations that they're able to provide. Now, one of the things that's unique about this Buenos Aires miracle is, again, the DNA was tested uh, and it was done by a forensic analytical. The person that did that DNA test is an FBI audited DNA tester. So this is not just your average person. And going on that thread, Dr. Frederick Zugaby was the person that reviewed the actual flesh showing that it was heart tissue. And he, uh, people might know him from uh, his work on the shroud and crucifixion, things like that. But um, he was on History Channel, National Geographic, taught at Columbia University, uh, did over 10,000 autopsies in his career. And they brought him the slide and they said, what is this? Because he's one of the few people, he's a cardiologist and a forensic pathologist. 
and a forensic pathologist. So he knows the heart and he knows death, you know. So he was able to say, yeah, this is heart tissue. And he actually said on camera, you can see it in that short video and uh, on the Reasons to Believe YouTube channel where I got that clip from originally, where he said, this is someone that was beat up across the chest. And he also gives a few other hypotheses, but I found that that one was really amazing. And again, he was able to do that because he saw that there was white blood cells present. And he himself said, how are there white blood cells present? This was three years ago. They would be dead by now, yet. It's a miracle, right? He, he actually said, are you sure that's, because it was the tissue was just sitting in water. He said, are you sure that that's not formaldehyde? which would preserve it rather than water, which would would destroy it. So interesting. Wow. Yeah. 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 These, these miracles really are um, unique <laughs> mm -hmm. to say the least. And, you know, I think that this is something that we as Catholics need to share with fallen away Catholics and non-Catholics, especially yeah. not that, not that we believe in the true presence of Jesus in the Eucharist because of these Eucharistic miracles, because that's not where our faith should lie. But at the same time, this is a great gift that God has given us. And why don't we share it? Right. We've had, I mean, I can't imagine the thousands of dollars that were spent in all of these analyses and for this to be relatively silent because you don't, you don't hear much of this, you know? Yeah, no, this is amazing. And uh, like I said, I've, I've seen the Lanciano one and I just remember for our family, we had our whole family there, uh, Joy and the eight kids. It was a magical, magical is the wrong word. It, will, it was a special moment because, of course, every time you're in the presence of the Eucharist, it is Jesus Christ, body, blood, soul, divinity. I believe that. I know that. I confess it. Uh, it's in the very core of who I am. And yet somehow just seeing the host bear and manifest the presence of Christ, it it's sort of, it's like someone waking you up out of a, a slumber. Like, yes, I know it. I believe it. But now I really realize I am receiving the second person, the Trinity, the incarnate Jesus Christ. And it's not only that, Ray, it's that he suffered so deeply. This is the sacred heart of Jesus, wounded for my sins, all of our sins, but my sins. So God knows what he's doing in these Eucharistic yes. miracles because it does, it it. I think we can, Ray, become accustomed to receiving communion so so often that it becomes a, a, a something robotic or something scheduled. When you see the miracle of Lanciano, and I haven't seen the other two, you realize, okay, I gotta I gotta start preparing for the Eucharist more. I need to take the Eucharistic fast seriously. Mm -hmm. I am receiving right the wounded body of Jesus Christ. Uh, I need to live more purely. I mean, all these things come to mind. It's a, it, 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 it brings about a deeper conversion. It does. And, you know, the wisdom, the Holy Spirit is truly guiding the Catholic Church. And uh, I say this because in doing this research, I realized in the, in the Father Lassant's Missal, there's a little thing that says, Eucharistic heart of Jesus, have mercy on us, right? And uh, I think it's interesting that we would say Eucharistic heart of Jesus, right? Why would, why would we pick the word heart? Why couldn't it be like the mind or the soul or, or something like that? Well, I guess the soul wouldn't make sense. So that was written in Arietis Aquas in the 1950s, right? That the Eucharistic heart of Jesus is, let me, let me just read the quote because this quote is amazing. Um, okay, ready? Nor will it be easy to understand the strength of the love which moved Christ to give himself to us as our spiritual food, save by fostering in a special way the devotion to the Eucharistic heart of Jesus. So this, this phrase, Eucharistic heart of Jesus, you know, relatively popular within Catholicism, but this was 20 years before they truly knew that it is the heart of Jesus that all of these Eucharistic miracles show us, that it's not you know, the hand or whatever. It's the heart of Jesus. And the heart is so powerful because we all have hardened or broken hearts. And by receiving the Eucharistic heart of Jesus, he can make us whole. I think that's something that we often don't think about. How, like, look throughout scripture. Christ wants a clean heart, right? Christ, Christ wants us to give everything to him. 
and, and to have him first. And a lot of that is related to our love for him and what symbolizes love, but the heart. So, and I mean, even in Latin, you know, misericordia is the word for mercy, mm. but right there in the middle, cordia core is, that doesn't mean core, like you're working on your core in Latin. It means your heart. So yes. even in the word mercy, misericordia is, is the idea of the heart that's, that's broken or that's turned, that's converted to the Lord. And you're right, especially in the old Testament. In, in the Hebrew understanding, the heart is the center. I mean, the heart is basically the spiritual compass that either orients towards the one true God or turns towards the idols. And in these Eucharistic miracles of the Eucharistic heart of Jesus, it's orienting us back to God, back to Christ. It is. And really, what is a, you know, what is a better way? I mean, think about, I'm sure there are tons of, men and women out there searching for their future spouse. We see it on Twitter all the time. They're like, hey, send me a good man, send me a good woman, right? I just saw it the other day. Imagine like the great relief and, and uh, hope that would come from realizing that we receive the heart of Jesus every Sunday and, and as often as we can, you know, that that will change our hearts, right? That they always say like the longest distance is between the head and the heart. And what can, what is the greatest source of that? is Jesus, God himself. So I really love reflecting upon that. Something that I encourage everyone to do is try to foster a greater devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus. It's kind of fallen out of, you know, popular custom. And uh, I think that's something we really need to get back to because when you think about his most precious heart and all that he went through for us, pierced for a lance, all these things, it's uh, it's really powerful. And Taylor, I wanted to to address the skeptics real quick. And the thing that I found the most amazing with all, well, I, I've said that like many times, right? But what I found so bizarre in, in speaking to these uh, these doctors, so they said that in order to mimic these miracles, you'd have to find someone with type AB blood. So that's about 7% of the world has type AB blood. It's the rarest blood type. Force them to have a heart attack or beat them across the chest. Take out a piece of their heart, which would basically kill them place it in formaldehyde to preserve everything, showing the white blood cells, and then put it on a host. One doctor that I spoke with last night, he said, Ray, if someone did that successfully, that would almost be a miracle, <laughs> you know? And I said, <laughs> wow. To hear a doctor yeah. say that it's almost as right. miraculous for that to happen than that to happen is, it's, it's pretty powerful. So these are things we all need to realize, and, and we should have we should have courage as Catholics to be able to say, yes, we believe in this and God has given us these signs and they have been backed up by doctors from around the world. So let's share this truth with others because I think that this could be a very hopeful tool, especially in this age where we're so focused on science, where science is always true unless it disagrees with the agenda, right? So here we need to be like, let's be consistent here and, uh, and, and spread this truth. Amen. All right, so everybody's assignment is, Share this around. Hit the share button. Share it on Facebook. Uh, like the video. Subscribe. Subscribe also to the Joy of Faith. And I'm going to link as soon as this video is over. I think it's already in the live chat. But as soon as this video is over, the link to the full nine minute, nine and a half minute video that Ray did on this topic with the research and the doctors and all that. You go watch that and you then you share that everywhere. We have to get the message out. So share this video. Share that video. Uh, follow Ray at the Joy of the Faith on uh, YouTube, and uh, I think we should close up in prayer. One quick thing, Taylor. Yeah. I um, so I just started a, a account to have to be to have patrons, and uh, one of the things I'm really trying to do is is get the money to do things like the microscopic mm -hmm. pieces that are lost during communion. I'd like to do a video on the scientific perspective on the Tilma of Our Lady of Guadalupe, incorrupt saints, things like this. To do more videos like this, because when you see that that nine and a half minute video. You'll say, wow, that was, you know, very engaging, things like that. I could share that with an atheist and they might say, hmm, I, I'm going to look into that. I'd like to do more of that to show that Catholics aren't stupid. We basically made science. So <laughs> if you could support me there, that'd be great. Good support there. Yeah. Patreon is always a great way. I have a Patreon. Thanks for everybody's supports on Patreon. And uh, so definitely go over to Ray's channel, his site, support there, share the video and all that. So... All right. Well, let's uh, we'll close up in an Ave Maria and a Glory Be, um, praying that um, 
that people come to love the Eucharistic heart of Jesus. Amen. Oremos. Nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in molieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostre. Amen. Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritu e Santo. Sicut erat in principio et nunc et seper et in saecula saeculorum. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Eucharistic heart of Jesus. Have, have mercy on us. Honest. And I also just want to point out there's a, a sweet gal in the comments. Her name is Hannah. She's saying that this is really affecting her and she wants to maybe become Catholic and to pray for her. So everybody pray wow. for Hannah. That's pretty cool. Um, so everybody, thanks for watching. And of course, you, you got to hear me say this, and that is pray the rosary every single day. If you don't pray the rosary, what's that? What happens, Ray? You're not on the team. You're not on the team. You're not on the team because, you know, you need a weapon. Uh, if we're going to be fighting this, this spiritual war, the spiritual combat that Christ has called us to in the Holy Sacrament of Confirmation, we all need the weapon. The sword of the Spirit is the Holy Bible, says the New Testament. And the weapon is this Holy Rosary, which is the Bible on beads. So pray the rosary every single day. Read the Bible every day. 15 minutes is the recommended time. Try to read the Bible every day. It's two or three, maybe four chapters. You know, start off reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's accessible. It's mm -hmm. not too confusing. And then, um, yeah, be a Catholic. Teach your kids the catechism. Find a traditional Latin Mass. Uh, go to Eucharistic adoration. Receive Eucharistic benediction. All the traditional norms. That's what you got to do. So uh, I want to thank Ray Grahalba for all your, your good work, your good research, and for sharing this with us. And encourage everybody to go underneath this video, find uh, the link to Ray, uh, the support, but also the video he's produced on the scientific proof for Eucharistic miracles. Thanks, Ray. Of course. And thank you to all the doctors that interviewed and, and did all this work. That was, uh, couldn't have done it without you. Awesome. All right, everybody. Remember our Lord Jesus Christ said you are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. God bless. Godspeed. Eucharistic heart of Jesus. Have mercy on us.